Thanks a lot. And welcome to the 2019-2020 Capital Outlay. This year we're going to do a little bit different, but still use the same model, but it is going to be a little different. One of the things we've done um, is we've asked that uh, this, this uh, Capital Outlay process be videotaped this time. And that way uh, we can actually show people what we're doing and stuff and, and the detail that we go through it in uh, determining what needs to be uh, identified for the capital outlay needs for this year and also the funding requirements that we have as well. So um, first of all, thank you all for coming. Uh, just in case, just for the community and other people uh, to know that uh, the capital outlay team that is brought together consists of uh, several different people. Um, we have maintenance involved in it, uh, our maintenance director, Dusty Oliver, and Daniel Gray, the assistant maintenance director. The chief technology officer, Jeff Pittman. The safety and security director, uh, Dusty Rhodes. Safety uh, transportation director, Mike Henderson. We've got Will Lane is a secondary executive director for secondary education. Mark Bullrus, Dr. Bullrus is executive director of elementary education. We've got Jocelyn Cassidy, she's gonna be the uh, principal representative for the middle schools and we also have Brad Staley who's the principal at Richlands High who's going to be the principal representative for the high schools so what you see here is a broad representation of all the school all the school staff that uh, is that uh, reviews all these needs as we go forward a couple things to make sure that people understand a lot of times when people hear about capital outlay they also hear the term capital improvement program so they're going, well, it's all the same thing. And actually it's not because the capital improvement program is more of a, a projection of what's needed over the next five to 10 years. The capital outlay is what we're, when we're actually sitting down looking at what are our actual capital needs for next year that are gonna be funded to move forward. And so one of the things when you see this right here, it says capital identifies the annual capital needs to maintain and support the facilities and structural needs of the school system. What that means is that we have several buckets of um, needs that are brought, put into the capital outlay program. Now one of them is the capital improvement program and we're looking at uh, our deferred maintenance. How many roofs do we have to put on each year and, and repair each year? How, uh, what kind of chillers we have to do is the capital improvement program. Instructional capital needs. There are several things in instructional capital needs that we look at as well. Um, example, which actually kind of crosses over in transportation, activity buses. That's an instructional need. That's funded through the capital outlay program. And then we have additional emergency needs. Uh, Dusty just talked to me just a minute ago. He said, you know, uh, we, just, we just got word that our hot water is, is out over at uh, Queens Creek Elementary right now. So all of a sudden, we've got to go ahead and fix the hot water heaters. That's a capital, that's a capital need that we, that we use the capital outlay funds for as well. So that's one of the things he's working on. And that wasn't in the capital improvement program. That was something that these are ad hoc situations that come up that have to be addressed. Safety and security needs. I think every school, almost every year, every school says, well, you know, we need more cameras or we need better cameras or cameras put in a different location, or we need better perimeter access, fencing. These are things that we look at as well. Transportation, we have approximately 50, 50 um, activity buses that have to be uh, maintained. And if you look at activity buses in, in their cells, if we just replace one every, one every 20 years, put it on a 20 year replacement cycle, that's two and a half activity buses every year. Okay, two and a half activity buses may not sound like much, but when they start costing eighty-five to ninety thousand dollars a piece, you're talking over two hundred thousand dollars just for activity buses. So there is a need there, and, they, and that's when you replace them after twenty years of service. We have other vehicle needs that we have. You notice that um, maintenance has to go down the road and fix these things. Well, we have approximately another two hundred thirty maintenance vehicles or service vehicles, not just maintenance, but service vehicles that have to be. Uh, addressed on an annual basis and if we put them on a 10 year I mean a 20 year replacement cycle we're still looking at another 10 12 maintenance vehicles coming up furniture that's an instructional need but it's also a, a facility need we've got approximately 26 27,000 students in the facility in our facilities right now 
How long should a desk and chair last in the classroom? Well, the desk and chair, let's say if we, to make, to round the numbers out evenly, let's say we have 27,000 students and we place the desk and chairs once every 27 years. That means I have to, we have to replace 1,000 desk and chairs every year. At $100 a pop, you're looking at 270000 a little over a quarter of a million dollars just for furniture. So one of the things that people don't understand when we talk about capital outlay needs is the scope of what we've got here. Okay, We have approximately 280 buildings. Uh, in the, we have 38 facilities that consist of 280 buildings and then another 220 mobile classrooms or mobile buildings. So we have, a lot of, we have a lot of facility needs that are addressed through the capital outlay on an annual basis. Technology is another one. I mean, you think about it, to make technology work, we have to do wiring in, in the schools, or we have to do the intercom systems. These things, over a period of time, age out as well. An intercom system would be good for, I don't know, Jeff, what, five, 10 years? Yeah, probably 10 years. Okay, and each intercom system is going to run between twenty and 50000 depending on the school. So these things get cycled through. So there's a lot of things are put together in the capital outlay needs. So this year, our capital outlay requests overall were 350, 350 <coughs> requests, give or take. Okay, when we put together all the estimates for that, that came out to $16,731,000. $18 and can't forget the 66 cents. Okay. So last year, our capital outlay that we were funded for was $3 million. Okay. So our job, and I'm glad you decided to accept the responsibilities for this job, is to take that $16,731,018.66 and let's whittle it down until we get uh, to either a $5.4 million or a $3 million level. We'll look at both levels going forward. So how do we do that? Like, like I say, um, we, create a, we create a funneling source. We put all the, all the requests in, and we, and we prioritize them. When we look at prioritization, there's two, two areas of the prioritization. One is category, and one is timeline needed. Category, categories that we look at are, one, if it's mandated by law. A great example of if it's mandated by law is the classroom size reductions. <coughs> this coming year, classroom sizes for K, <coughs> K through two, I'm sorry, K through three, is going to be 19 students per classroom. Okay? In the last year, it was 20 students per classroom. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot of difference, just one, just one more student. Um, reduction in a class, but that, that reduction right there probably equates to another four or five mobile classrooms that we have to put in, in the school system, especially in some of these schools that are overcrowded. So these are things that we're looking at right there. So mandated by law, another thing that's extremely important in our school system and, and across, the, across the state, I'm sure it's with other school systems too, is the safety and security of students and staff. Do we, have the, do we have the safety and security in the students' staff? Do we have the, the processes and the equipment in place to ensure that we provide a safe, safe and uh, secure school for everybody? The other item, category three, protection, preservation of property. If we've got a roof that's, that's torn up and it's leaking, do we fix it or we don't fix it? If we don't fix it, we create additional problems. So we have to we have to protect the property we already have so we reduce the amount of uh, problems we have in the future. Instructional needs. We talked about instructional needs. Um, another good example of an instructional need is playgrounds. We need playgrounds. We need athletics. These are things that are part of the instructional need that have to be identified in, and uh, addressed as we go forward in this process. Just a quick um, Side note, uh, while we talked about we have 38 campuses, we have about 3.8 million square feet of heated, square heated uh, space for all the facilities. That's not including mobiles. When you put mobiles in, you're up to about 4.2 4 million square feet of heated space. 
we've got over 1,450 acres of property. Now, most of this property isn't wooded or empty, empty lots. Most of this property is actually being used, either for the facility itself or for the playgrounds and the athletic fields that we have and the parking and parking and driving, I mean parking and um, driveways. So we have a lot of stuff going on here with, with our facilities. We are the largest we are the largest government entity besides the base in Nelson County. Then we have other capital needs that may come up. When we go through the list, we may be seeing some things that may not fall through in the first four categories, but there's other capital needs that we need, so we'll identify that as item five. The other thing is capital outlay program focuses on the annual capital outlay, and we also recognize at times there's other funding sources that can be used for some of the programs that, or some of the items that have been identified. When that happens, we'll put that as other funding sources or category six. Is everybody comfortable with that? The next part of that uh, priority is when we're looking at timeline needed. Okay? So if I look at, uh, if, I, if we identify that as an A, that means that this is, is, has to be done this coming year. If it's a B, it needs to be done within the next two to three years. If we have the resources available to do it this year, we want to get it done. But if not, it needs to be identified for the next years coming forward. C is for the next five years, and D would be for a later date. Not every need that you're going to see on this capital outlay um, request are going to be something that needs to be a, an A. Some of them are going to be a B, C, or D. So that's some of the things. That's our as as a team. That's our goal is to figure out which ones these are. Is everybody comfortable with that so far? Any questions? So the, so the question comes up now is how do we get 16.7 million down to 3 million at the worst case scenario? Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and. Um, We're going to fix this. That's what we're going to do right now. There we go. All right. So this is um, with the screen. Let me let me shrink this up a little bit so we can see the notes on the side too. I'm going to take this. Remember, this is. Um, this is a this is a work in process every year, and as we go forward, we make we we change things as needed. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to go ahead and start um, looking at the schools, and we'll go down the list of schools. When we get down to about uh, Northwoods Park Middle or something like that, we'll probably be about two hours. We'll be about two hours into it. If we're not, we'll, we'll continue on. But after about two hours, two and a half hours. It's time to go ahead and take a break because this does get old. And trust me, I know I know what my voice is like. I know I'm not the most exciting speaker. So in that process, I don't want to put you to sleep. Okay. So the first first item we're going to talk about, and when we start looking at this, when you start looking at the sheets, one of the things you'll see is we put a priority code. That's the priority code is where we're actually going to identify if it's a 1, 2, 3, 4, A, B, C, D, okay? The requested, original requested amount, these are estimates that we have, and the estimates are coming from historical, historical knowledge of what we've done in the past and how much it's costed, okay? We always put in enough to cover, to cover the, the request to the best of our knowledge. If there's money that's left over at that, then we'll actually put it into the next items that go forward. Notes. This is where we put different notes in. One of the things I, that we're doing this year that uh, we may not have uh, identified before for you guys is, do you see where I, it says CIP year three, that second line? If it's in our capital improvement program that's already been identified and we identified it for a certain year already, in other words, in the 2021-22 20, school year, I'll make sure you guys know about it. So as we go forward, we can discuss, do we need to move that, that, um, that request up to this coming year because the need has changed? 
which could very well be. I mean, remember, it's a, the capital improvement program is a projection of what's needed over the next five to ten years. So things change. And we, ad we adjust the capital improvement program every year. The other side of it is if it looks like it can be, if, if it can hold off for another year or two, then maybe that's what we do is we put it as a category B. So these are things that we're going to talk about when we go to each line item. Does that make sense? And some things are going to be work orders. Some things are going to be um, already being in process. Some of the things may be addressed through Hurricane Florence. We tried to, we tried to call out the majority of the, the work that's going to be done through Hurricane Florence already. We've got about $11, $12 million worth of work that's already identified for Hurricane Florence that we didn't even put in here. So one of the things we're trying to do now is go ahead and just focus on what the capital outlay needs are, out excluding Hurricane Florence. Got a question, Mike? I see you looking at me. No. All right. So let's go ahead and get started on the first one. Um, the first, first request was the mobile unit at Bell Fork Elementary. And two classroom um, mobile units were needed. Um, Dusty, is, is the, are those on the list for uh, mobile classrooms identified? Yes. It's listed as $150,000, and the reason that uh, amount is in there is because we've got to add a fire lane to access those mobiles. And we've already met with the city fire marshals, and uh, they told us it had to support about an 80,000-pound vehicle to be able to access that. So we had to add additional funds in there, more than what a normal mobile would cost. So, um, and also we're working on contracts to get those out to bid. Right. So that's where that number came from. And that's something that's in the classroom reduction. So that was as of, that was for 2019. Now, one of the things too, I, I would like to mention as well, when I, bear with me. And I'm glad you mentioned that, Dusty. So this process that we're gonna go through, this first phase, what we're going to do is we're going to do the prioritization. We're going to say if it's a 1A, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, A, B, C, D. Okay, we'll come up that number we come up with at the end of, end of that process. I don't know what it will be. It will probably be around, I, I can't tell you, 6, 8, 9, 10 million, whatever it would be. Then we're actually going to go in justification for each dollar. So right now what we're going to focus on is the classification and the priorities. Okay. So when we look at this, so the priority, it's mandated by law because of the classroom, because K-3 classroom sizes. So that's a one. And it's it's a need for next year. So it's 1A. Y'all in agreement? Okay. Then we gotta cover the walkway towards the bus lot. Okay, so so the bus lot has got, um, let's see if I can pull it up. Okay, so Bell Fork Elementary. Here we have the school, and the bus light is over in here. Do you see see where that's at? So the buses are coming through this way. Is that right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And so what they would like to have is a covered walkway over here. Okay. Now I know historically we get a lot of these requests for canopies and for walkways, for covered walkways, for lots of different purposes, and most of the time it's for, for loading and unloading uh, students, either car riders or bus drivers, bus riders. So the question that we'd ask is, okay, how would we prioritize that? What category would you consider it? 4A. Is it an instructional need? What do you guys think? And the other thing, I please please remember, when we get done, th when we go through this, we we try to get a consensus from everybody. It's not just one person saying one thing or the other. 
it's, it's something that we try to make sure we fully discuss it. And if there's any questions about it, then we can uh, go back and look at it again. Or even if we have to go back and get some more information, we can do that. So. Well, I want to ask, if it sparked us um, already in the improvement plan for year three, when was this first submitted or? This one right here, this was probably submitted um, for the last two or three years. We've had the same submittal. And, and historically, because we've been limited to the amount of money that we've been given, it's just kind of a turnover. It's year. kind of rolled over every year. Okay, so in that process, I mean, that's why it's in, yeah, for the improvement plan for year three there. Yeah. So, is it an instructional or is it? It's two. MBA or it's two safety students. Safety students. Yeah. Okay. And as far as the timeline is concerned, do we need it now, today, or, I mean, next year? Not today, but I mean, you know what I'm saying. Do we need it currently? And, and please remember, once we go through this stuff, we can be over aggressive right now. But once we go through the, we have to cut it back out. Then we can look at. It. We'll, we'll be looking at it again. So if you think it's an A, we can put it in A. If you think it's a B, C, D, we want to get your input on this as well. Remember, the other thing I want to make sure everybody understands. In operations, we want to give it to. We want to give all of it to you guys. Okay. If you request it, we want to give it to you. But we know that we need your input to make sure we, that we're prioritizing things correctly. Yeah, I mean, I think my hesitation on saying need for next year is that I, I also, you know, if, if a breezeway is needed there for next year, then we look at a breezeway needed to get to the mobile units that we're about to add for next year, then a breezeway to get to the, I mean, so I don't know where you stop with the breezeways and how you say which ones are needed next year versus two years versus. Right. Um, no. So, so right now it's it's already identified in the capital improvement program for year three. I mean, would you guys A or B then? I'd say B is a program. I would say B, yeah. B, okay. Parking lot, okay. Pave the parking lot near the near the baseball field. This is one of the things that uh, Dr. Dr. Williams has uh, asked for several times in the past. Um, Paving's always been, been at an expensive project and stuff, and for whatever reason, it's always hadn't had a chance to get that done yet. So um, he would like he would like to put put it on the list again. I don't think it's in the capital improvement program this year, or I mean in the future. So that's one of the things to be aware. Of. It hasn't been scheduled yet. So if we want to prioritize it now or categorize it, however you guys want to do that. Um, going back to the way it, the way it looks, okay, so the baseball field is over here, and this, this grass, I mean this gravel area right here is where he wants to go ahead and uh, pave it. One of the things we do have to be careful about when we, when we start doing the paving right there is um, impervious soils. Once we once we start getting to a certain percentage of the property being um, asphalted, at that point in time, then we have to start looking at storm retention um, systems as well. So we we'd have to take a look at that close closely and stuff as well, just to make sure that uh, it's not being it's not going to impact um, our our water runoff. Yeah, so storm water um, runoff. What Mr. Myers is saying is, is there's a lot of requests in here for additional parking and um, or sidewalks or anything at all. It, it all the property a lot of times affected by uh, the water just running, not being able to run across sidewalks and things. And uh, to follow the guidelines, we may even have to hire a civil engineer to be involved with this process, and more than likely we would. And, uh, before we ever did anything as far as paving. But when we start categorizing it, I mean, we're just giving you a little history right now, but when we start categorizing it, um, is it something that's not mandated by law? Is it a safety, safety concern? It can be. We have, you know, workers' comp, that type of thing, staff okay. falling on gravel. I was going to say, is it because for the need of a parking lot? And most I think, of the I think for additional parking is what okay. they're looking for. 
He says when he has events that um, mm -hmm. usually they can only possibly have one grade at a time at an event because there's just not enough places for the parents to park mm -hmm. on, on the facility. So is that an instructional need then, or is it um, safety? And s I would go back and forth between safety and other. I was going to say, how many, do, do we have an idea how many workmen's comp have been? That's I mean, mm -hmm. but across the county. Across the yeah, it's a, mm -hmm. yeah. pretty regular. So you, we're thinking. Do 5B. 5B. B. B. Okay. Okay, new building to replace aging mobile units. I agree 100%. Okay, unfortunately, that's not in the capital outlay. That's going to be in the capital improvement construction program, which we, uh, we're looking at um, through several, several avenues. I mean, once we start looking at building new schools, we realign uh, school districts and stuff like this as well. So that one right there is probably going to be other funding sources. Okay, and that's going to, and, okay, because uh, that's going to be in the capital improvement program, capital, I mean, uh, construction. Cameras, replace damaged cameras, install more cameras on campus and in the hallway throughout the building. Okay, I see what's in process. Yep, the damaged cameras being replaced are in the process. Now, when we see in process, but there's a dollar amount, is that still going to come out of the dollar amount we're looking at for this year if it's no. already in process? So the in process is, I kind of took this as two different requests. Fix the damaged ones, that's from the hurricane, that's in process. The additional more cameras would be about the ten grand mark. Most of his cameras are all um, inside. <coughs> um, not a whole lot. How much is an individual camera? Um, I say average about a thousand dollars a camera by the time you pull cable labor that type of thing right, We also have to understand that adding cameras can lead to added expense Correct. on the switch end mm -hmm. So every time you add an IP camera, you may have to buy a five thousand dollar switch because you just ran out of mm -hmm. port space on the switch it just depends on that's going to be from site to site. Yes, and I don't have the, I don't have the list with me right now But how many cameras do they have right now? 16? They have how many? 16 in Belfort. 16? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm So they're lower on, the, as far as the number of cameras on campus, they're a lower number. We, we go anywhere from 16 to, what, 60? 50, yeah, 55, 56. Yeah. It says he got some areas that he's definitely concerned about that's not covered right now. So yeah, it's, mm -hmm. there's just not a lot of coverage there. So, so it's a two for safety, yeah. safety and security. Be done two A. I give it two A. Install lay in ceilings and new classroom lighting. That's part of the program that I uh, would go with the uh, the second after they have removed that specified insulation in building two and four and reinsulate pipe. We have if we can do that. Now that the insulation is in good condition, it's just a matter of the process of removing asbestos through the school system. We try to do so much every so many, you know, every opportunity we have with funding is available. Um, if we could do that, then we would go back and put in lay-in ceilings and better lighting. The lighting that's predominantly there is from the 60s still, and uh, we have a lot of complaints about uh, just not enough light in the classrooms. Uh, so once mm -hmm. we do that, we would put in a ceiling, insulate it, so it'd be more efficient. So we have to do. We need to do the first one, remove the pipe insulation and re-insulate before we can do the ceilings. So that's an, I guess, an instructional need request. All accumulate <coughs> into a structural problem because it's all in good condition now as far as the pipe insulation. Okay. So that'd be four. Four. Put four B. Oh well, let's well let's go back. Let's go down to the asbestos removal. Now, one of the things too, uh, because we are because we are taping this one, I want to make and most of you are already aware of it, but I want to make sure I reiterate to others that may not be aware of this is that all our all our asbestos um, all our areas that are located with asbestos in the school systems are, are contained, 
and they're in good condition, and there is no hazard or, or health issues for any of our students or our staff because of that. For example, if we have um, we have a asbestos tile on the floor, well, it's contained. I mean, it's not. There's no free particles running around. Same thing with if we have in the roofing in the roofing structure, it's all contained and it's safe. However, that being said, we have schools that are 40, on average, 42 years old. We know that we don't want to have hazardous materials in our schools. So in our program, what we do is, on an annual basis, we work on trying to eliminate, more, little by little, additional areas where we know there's asbestos, even though it's, it's, it's contained and not a hazard. We, we try to go above and beyond to make sure we start getting rid of all of it. Because we don't want to see this their stuff in there either. But uh, and so that's where we're at with that right now. The Bell Fork Elementary, there's no hazards, there's no I don't want people to come back and say, well, you know, we got asbestos there. We that's dangerous for our kids. Well, no, it's not. We test it periodically. We have uh, we have books on this, we have make sure it's contained, everything's in a safe environment. I have to make sure people understand that when we when we talk about this. We want to be open, let everybody know what's going on, but they also have to realize that we have things that we work on to make sure that all our students and staff are safe as well. You also do, we have staff go out and inspect it every <coughs> six months, mm -hmm. by law, which we by keep law. it. So we follow, we follow all the codes and by law, and uh, it, these are safe schools. So, okay, so <coughs> asbestos pipe insulation in building two and four and re insulate piping. We could put that as I mean it's, it is identified in the CIP. We could you know we could put it as a 4A by the moment, and then later on as we go through the process, we see okay, maybe a, a need somewhere else that's greater. Okay, so the asbestos removal will be a 3A. Um, I think it would still be a at the moment. It's, it's an instructional through the process of getting the better lighting. You know, you mm -hmm. got to do this before we do this. That it'll be part of the instruction. I mean, right, you can so put it, we we can put it as a three, it wouldn't really matter. Okay, so if a three A, then it's a four A. Okay, then you also have a special school for the cafeteria. It's in the it's in the ceiling plaster. Ceiling and plaster and that's and it's again, you know, they've asked for some additional lighting and stuff. We have done some things there with right. the light fixtures that's already there, putting LED lighting and trying to bring the light level up. Uh, but that's just again another need. Mm -hmm. So be another, you could probably put that as a. Well, see, it's identified in CIP six to ten. Yeah. So it it could be a three B three C. Three C. Okay. All right. Well, congratulations, folks. We just finished one school. Thirty eight more to go. All right. I just want to ask the remove asbestos pipe insulation. That's a three A. That's what, uh, okay. yeah, that's what we had to put down as 3A. Okay. And we'll probably, when we go back through again, we can mm -hmm. filter it down. Okay, Blue Creek Elementary. Okay, this was identified in Cap, and uh, is uh, new windows for the main building. And I think the main building they're talking about is the one that goes, once you pass the, the main office, you go down that one corridor that's uh, perpendicular to it. And we and so we have it in the capital improvement plan for year two, for the 2021 school year. But is this something that we need to bring up earlier? I mean, they're single pane windows. They're uh, you know, they're old. They're faulty. They've been recognized in the past. It was been they've been asked to be changed for many years. So mm -hmm. it, it continues to be put back into the, the um, improvement plan. So, what do you think? Three A's, three B's. Three B. Going once, twice. Exterior lighting. Okay, that's something that's going to be handled through maintenance. I've already, yeah, I've already got some people looking into that. So I think that's something that we we can do by uh, through the power company, or we can do something out of maintenance as far as uh, maybe changing the light fixture to a better light or something. Okay. 
Sidewalk drainage. Okay, the sidewalk for the fourth and fifth grade buildings floods during rain and holds up to four to five inches of water. We've got that identified, but it's a long-term identification and capital improvement plan. Daniel, I see you want to say something. <laughs> yes, sir. I mean, it's, it needs to be moved up a little bit. Okay. I concur. It needs to be moved up. <laughs> All right. That's so. just another place we may need a civil engineer to get involved. Mm -hmm. So, moved up to next year? Anything that, that doesn't go through this year that's been a request, it will continue into the mm -hmm. process next year again, right? Right. One of the things, yeah, one of the things we need to remember too, I think it's been brought out to the to our board and to the county commissioners and stuff too. We've got in our capital improvement plan, not the capital outlay, but the capital improvement plan, we have this we identify the maintenance needs every year. The the needs that aren't addressed that year roll over into deferred maintenance. Okay? So if you can imagine this or there's probably quite a bit of deferred maintenance that happens from year to year to year. For example, we have identified just in capital improvement plan this year is about $7.9 million worth of uh, capital improvement needs, facility needs, not, not transportation, technology, safety, security, or instructional needs, but just the facility needs, 7.9 million. We probably won't get that, so some of this stuff gets deferred into deferred maintenance and we'll go back and look at it and, and address it again next year. And what happens finally is you just you just hit the hottest spots and you address things that you have to have immediately and stuff in this deferred maintenance pro process. And some things which we just make <laughs> Sometimes we, uh, just through maintenance work, we can alleviate some issues so it's not quite as bad as it was. And so maybe it's not as, <coughs> as much of a problem in the future. But right. that's something that we really won't know till next year as we go through this year and see what we can do. So, All right, so the sidewalk drainage over at uh, Blue Creek Elementary, you want to try to address it this year, you said? Go to 2A. The 2A or 3A? Okay. Fencing. Okay. Um, they're requesting fencing between buildings at the front of the school. Okay. And what they're concerned about is uh, runners in the school that uh, would go out into Highway 53. <clears throat> so it's a two. So it's a two. We may have to talk to the fire marshals also and see how, what they'll allow us to do. Because when, you know, mm -hmm. when they evacuate, look at their evacuation plan, if they can't evacuate their active shooter plan, um, right. to see if they could actually, if we're going to block people from moving throughout the campus. So it, if there's several problems there. It's just we don't want to do something that's going to become even a worse problem uh, for the school as a whole. Some of these things we'll have to evaluate and, and work out a scenario or solution for it that uh, complies with all code and, and safety requirements. So the other thing too, now Dusty, have we had, do you know if we've had any runners out there at Blue Creek Elementary? A couple, yeah. Okay, so we agree it should be an A then? We could put it as A and then just, you know, even if if we decide through this process to do this or try to, to ask for funds for this, you know, then we might get, you know, like I said, okay. get the fire officials and the law enforcement staff and just see what they allow us to do. Okay. Here's a playground equipment. Is it, um, they're in need of a new playground equipment. An older piece was dismantled and hauled off this year to the student safety. So. Um, the 17, 18 year, we they kind of redid most of their playground, and mm -hmm. I think there was one piece left, and this is a part of it. So um, they do need another piece to okay. accommodate the number of students. So that's a four for instructional need, and it's a, and we've had it, we identified a CAT CIP program for this yeah. coming year. So make that an A. Yep. Okay. Okay. Roofing. We're in the kitchen and boiler area. 
we identified it for this year as in the capital improvement plan. So you still is that still a high priority for you? Blue Creek um, Elementary? Well, and as you all see that they're numbered and what we did is we took everything out that was a hurricane damage, so to speak, that we are that we know about. And we tried to, to number them at that point in time, one through twenty, I believe. And and these are all problems. It's just we tried to decide on which one was the worst at the moment, and which may change today, because as things happen and, and we have a roof all of a sudden a big problem. Um, so there's some one that's the number twelve. So there's one through eleven that are we feel like we're greater concern than these. Um, and as you we go through it, you'll see that mm -hmm. we're going to have to cut even a lot of these out. Um, so we could we could give it a four a. Would be um, a four a or a three. Four excuse me. A, three for a three. Property. I'm sorry. A three a. Uh, it's just. Um, okay. And later on, we'll probably be cutting a lot of these out. Well, this, the glass is half full. Yes, sir. Okay. So, all right, and the next one is uh, the cafeteria dining room roof. Okay, that's the 13th most urgent roofing project, and that was scheduled in the capital improvement plan for year two, so 3B. Okay, Carolina Forest International Elementary. Okay, install permanent fencing barrier around the water field ditches leading out onto the playground. Okay, two open ditches always filled with knee deep standing water on either side of the walkway entrance to the playground that all 900 students and staff walk past daily. Okay, and there's no barrier from the sidewalk to prevent the students from falling into the ditches. And she'd like a permanent fencing system to protect those accessing the school playground. It's in the capital improvement plan for year one. Is that a safety issue? It's a two A. Yeah. Okay. All right. Tint windows along the main hall and 600 hallway. Main hallway 100 and 400 are visually open and vulnerable, vulnerable to outsiders. The area is too large for blinds. In addition, in addition to the inside room temperatures along these hallways, can get sauna-like during the season. Tinting would provide the year-round security needs from the outside as well as the shade, which would help with energy costs. So this is something that um, this is a new request we haven't seen in the capital improvement program yet. Um, I don't know if others, other schools of that design have that tinting. That's what I was about to ask. Would that be a concern with all schools of that design if it's a concern right. there? Yeah. I don't. I don't think we've seen it with with the other requests yet. So I'm not sure um, that, where this one would fall. I think the visually opening, I think, is, cons uh, is consistent, but the you know the angle of the school and all that with the sun, I, can, I you know, don't know how right. that plays out. Would it be considered a safety concern? Yeah, concern. It, yeah, yeah, it could be, but there's not a lot of uh, it's that not hallway is just it's mainly a hallway. There's not rooms on that right. hallway. Yeah, yeah. not classrooms. Yeah, it's, it's just passage. a hallway, so I would almost say so it's a So it's just like the main lobby area yeah, yeah. where the media center yeah. is toward the cafeteria. Just walking. You walk basically from the multi-purpose room to the office. That's, There's no yeah. classrooms there. Okay, I know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I would I'll probably say it's more of a five, and it's not, mm. it's not mandated by law. It's not really a safety security issue. It's not preservation of property, instructional need, five. Mm -hmm. And as far as time frame is needed, we we need to take a look at this then. Okay. Yeah, but we'll until that but we'll take a look at it. But, but until then, if you're okay with it, I'll put it as a C. 
but we have, we'll have to get some eyes on that one. Okay, Carol, Carolina Force wants four additional cameras and to monitor the front parking circle for the bus drop off. Okay, and so they want to basically see where, where students are being picked up and dropped off at. Mm -hmm. Um, I included a little uh, additional cost there because we do have to get out front of the school. Mm -hmm. It'll take a little extra, but um, they have 20 cameras there now, um, but nothing really watching the area she's asking for. Does it, so it warrants it? Yeah, I'd, I'd say two way. Okay. All right. Paved staff gravel parking. <coughs> Okay, staff parking lot to the right of the building is gravel and poses a walking hazard for staff to and from. All right. So we're looking at that, what we're looking at here, just so you're aware of it. You see this, this right here was uh, additional parking that was put in about it was seven years ago, six, seven years ago, and it takes a lot of site work and design work engineers to look at it because we have some swells right in here, and so by paving this and looking at it, they'll have to do the runoffs and build up and stuff too, so I think what she's looking at is adding additional space right here for the parking. The parking right there right now, and, and it's, it's not there. The other, the other thing is um, when you look at it, there is parking over on this other side of the campus but it's a long it's a long walk so it's, it'll be about two hundred thousand dollars worth of work for for uh, very few cars that can park there. 5B, 5C. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So guys, we're doing pretty good. We got three schools done. Not done, but we... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, 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 ne the next meeting, trust me, guys, the next meeting, you'll appreciate this. We're actually going to bring in tissues <laughs> because everybody's going to start crying. <laughs> and she's laughing. She knows. <laughs> All right, um, Clyde, Clyde Irwin Elementary Magnet School, interior painting. Uh, she'd like to have um, the school painted inside again. It's about, and it's identified in the capital improvement plan for year one. Um, but we did also do quite a bit of the painting in 2016. So the condition, as far, Daniel, as far as the condition of the walls and stuff in there right now in the classrooms, is it is it, is it is it a color is it a color issue or is it a a paint issue? It's a want issue. There's okay. some murals and stuff that's up there that was dated, painted back in the day. Mm -hmm. Then most of the times we ask the principal of that school at the time they want to keep or not. Right. This they've changed principals. This principal doesn't want the murals, so okay. we need to go back and paint over them and stuff and all. Because when we were there before, we skipped over them because the principal right. at the time wanted to keep them. Okay. So. All right, so it's more of an instructional or other? For B or C. Okay. You okay with that, Mark? Yeah, I mean, you're, 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 I was just kind of going, I don't know that it's, I'm trying to picture what the murals are, I don't know, so I don't mm -hmm. know if this is instructional, I'll okay. probably go to five on it, yeah. <clears throat> Okay. Okay, robotic lab transition, remove metal steel computer table bench divider in the old computer room to transition to robotic STEM classroom. Okay. And I'm not sure, Jeff. Do you do you know if um, that's uh, those 
uh, computer tables and bench dividers? Do they have the, the drop-down network drops? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. That may be something that maintenance can do. It's just we, we probably okay. need to uh, have y'all evaluate it. Okay. And look so that's at a it maintenance. And that's see something that that's maintenance more of a work order type work situation. Order. Remove carpets, install tile in the kindergarten classrooms. So. that up. Three. Do we have tile underneath underneath the carpets? We have to, to investigate. I mean, sometimes um, there's tile there. Sometimes it was asbestos tile and the carpet was just put on top of it. So if right. we want to apply a little bit more to it than just replacing it mm -hmm. um, and I'd be I, I'm actually surprised with the request to go to tile I mean I could see a request to replace carpet right because okay Daniel as far as you know what the condition of the carpets are over there uh, we had to go back and look at our new Vicar has his book we, as it keeps down the years of the carpet has been down so the best thing for us to do is be look at and see when it was put down and what age the carpet is and then go from there with it. We can try to evaluate. Uh, All right. I'm going to I'm, I'm gonna put a TBD on that one to be determined. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, we got uh, some roofing projects. Backhaul. And we already we already said that um, that twelve that the twelfth most urgent roof was uh, an A. I think it, I think it was labeled as an A earlier. Was and right. Then, so uh, anything twelve and below is an A. Mm -hmm. Is that a good assumption? Then? Sure. And then we can go back and reevaluate. Okay. And the cafeteria roofing section that would be a three A because that's the ninth most urgent roofing project. And then we got some some abatement. Okay, but we've got that identified for year six through ten, and we've already said that we're looking at Blue Creek, so that would be a three. Three C. Three C. Okay, tinting for media center windows. Win windows. I thought we put blinds up in that area, in the media center. No, sir, we could. Okay. The cost. And they've been asking for that for a long time. Yes, sir. Yeah. And it, it, it is impactful in that area. Yes, sir. So, 4A? Four 4A. Four you know, in case you're not aware where it's at, in the media center, they've got um, it's facing more to the southern southern direction where you got the windows above the wall, up, up, high, high up, and it's just bringing the sun in and blinding kids and stuff. I'm oh, not blinding them, but I mean, I got to be careful what I'm saying. Now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on camera. <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> but uh, it's, but it's, I mean, it does impact uh, where they sit and stuff in the media, in the media center and stuff too. So it's something that's neat. It's just always been put on the backlog because of all the other needs. <clears throat> Continue window replacing project. That was just something that's a recognized need because of the age of windows and the we, we have done some in the past when there were funds available. It's just one of those things where if funds are available, that's a, a good place to, okay. to use. Now, I know we had in capital improvement plan, we had looked at replacing all of them for 285000 in uh, the 21-22 school year. So, so that'll be a 3B. Okay. All right, gym floor replacement. We're getting good at replacing. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, we're, I mean, we're putting the target sports floor down mm -hmm. in the multi purpose rooms instead of carpet. Yeah. Because of and it's been working pretty well. Yes, sir. So. 
And we have, do have issues in the multi-purpose rooms because they are, they get dirty, mm -hmm. soiled. Um, we've had issues, and we've had issues here at Dixon where we've had to do multiple cleanings mm -hmm. as far as with the carpet. Right. 3A? I think that would be a good place to. Yes, sir. Okay. Because it's used so much by all the students, primarily it would be a good place to put some funds. Yeah, three or four, four. Yeah. All right, and then um, heat pumps for the 700 building. Now I know in the capital improvement plan it was a year, it was it was a long term projection, year well, six through ten. You know, if um, if funding was available, they they're in pretty bad shape. What we're doing now is we're just replacing them as we can. You know, mm -hmm. when something fails, we go to replace it instead of replacing in mass. Um, I'll probably, uh, uh, let's, let's say, a, a 3B, 3C. Okay. Um, you want to, you, in fact, if you would, a 3C, and we'll continue to work through maintenance and, and try to uh, take care of that. Okay. It works best when, when uh, if something's new, the maintenance staff can be doing other things. And, and there's, what are, it's just, we can do those one, ones at a time. You know? It's just um, how we approach our, what we're gonna do. Right, one of the things I do wanna to bring to your attention too is um, when we get down towards the end, okay, there's gonna be some maintenance issue items there that you're gonna see. And some of the stuff, what it comes down to is um, all sites, if, uh, we have things like uh, for roofing and for um, emergency repairs and stuff like that, some painting and stuff. There's a lot of things that happen during the year that are hard to identify what's going to be at any given time. For example, he's talking about the chillers. Okay. So in that process, we do have we do have some contingency money built into the to the plan, and that way, if something breaks, we can go fix it right away. We don't have to go ask for additional money. Now, if in this process, all that money gets used up and we go back and look at the capital outlay program, and if there's things in there that we had to cut that there were, that we want to, that, that we didn't need the money after all, we'd go ahead and repurpose it for those items that we had to cut earlier. So that's some of the things we're, we look at as well. But uh, so there is some contingency funding in there. And I think you all know when the uh, principals especially, they give a call and all of a sudden we're out there trying to fix things and we got parts and materials and supplies coming in. Well, that's where that contingency fund comes from, is being used. Okay, so Dixon Middle School, um, the new Dixon Middle School, they'd like a fence around um, the athletic fields. Okay, and so I don't know if I don't know if that's been updated yet. It's identified as a safety need, so um so let's look at it. <coughs> okay, so here's the new Dixon Middle School, and what they're talking about is putting a perimeter fencing all along the outside behind the fields. Most of this most of this area is wooded back there. You have a little bit of access over here, and then your front access. <coughs> so, $20,000 not will get you far. No, 20000 will get you half, half a side. Mm. So we probably have to put more into it than that if we do it. I'm not sure it's as much of a safety issue. I want to be careful when I say that. I mean, it may be a safety issue, but I think there's probably more pressing safety issues that we have to address as well. And I don't, well, what do you think? I was down as probably a 2B or C. <clears throat> okay. We'll put it as a 2B right now and see how this is that. Okay, Dixon High School, new auditorium. Okay, 
uh, so they want a new auditorium. A new auditorium will cost, I mean, just just a guess, about five million dollars. <coughs> so I think that's going to be in the capital improvement plan <coughs> construction program. Okay, so I don't, I, we're going to probably move that out out of this one. So that's other funding. <laughs> And that would be six C. Then Musco Lighting. Okay, we've got that identified for the athletic for the for the fields. It's about two hundred fifty thousand dollars. We added in the capital improvement plan for year two. Is this something that needs to be brought up to year one? Every year, I don't know, probably for the last five or six years, it's it's been in. Or as a request, mm -hmm. and each year it gets um, pushed back. This is our last one for bus guy. It's, it's, it's our last it's football it's soccer field. Yes, sir. Right. So, 4A, try to get it done this coming year? Uh, I think we will include it as an A and see how it works out. And they, they it, it's nice, but they, they mentioned it's a safety issue as far as mm -hmm. and, and certain regulations, uh, athletic yes. regulations that they're trying to. Take. Really, a two instead of a four. Is it a four two? <clears throat> okay, carpet and media center needs to be replaced. Put more order. I mean, let's look at it. Let's look at it first. Let me just look at it. Okay. Okay. Cover for walkway at Dixon High School Annex. Now that now that we gave them additional capacity, there's a long there's a long walkway similar to what we have in, over at uh, Swansboro Middle School. And. There's a good. I think there's a newer. What's that? I think it's been updated. Oh, it's not even listed on there. You know, see the picture. The walkway. Is it on there already? Yes, sir. I think there's a newer. Um, a newer photo. Yeah, I there's believe. a newer photo. You know, I know we did a walkway across. Yeah, right no, we don't have a canopy yet, do we? Mm -hmm. I think that's what they're talking about right there. And I think it's 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 needed. That's a long walk for mm -hmm. kids in the rain and facilities. Mm -hmm. I'll, have to, I'll have to write a letter, letter to Google, won't I? <laughs> All right, so. So we're saying that's a 2A? 2A. Okay, air handler for the band room. I think um, because of the cost of it, we probably can, you know, if we just wait till it dies and do a maintenance. Okay. If everybody's in agreement, it's just. And then, then you got the air handler for the U-Haul. That's a that's different. Those are uh, like we did at White Oak um, mm -hmm. maybe four or five years ago. We replaced all the air handlers and uh, and the condition units on the the, U, okay. the old classroom buildings. The same way they are is they're in, in uh, they're just old, very old. Is it an immediate need or something needs to be done in the next couple of years? They're running right at the moment and. and it's just those, that's one of the places where we probably need to go through and, and change them out. And this process lets us do it possibly, hopefully, during the summer when no one's there. If it fails during the winter, then we have an issue with um, classrooms that are not heated. Um, well, we'll just or, leave it as a 3A right now and see how it flushes out then. Yes, sir. <coughs> and, and that's with any of these. You know, it could happen any time. It's just if we can push big projects into the summer, it, it helps out a lot as far as uh, instruction is concerned. All right. Yeah. Heritage Elementary. Okay. Would you like to have some awnings over by the mobile classrooms? Let's see if I've got this. And 
the, those two, the, that one and the one below that, when this was being priced out, we were assuming that that was awnings for all those areas trying to get back to those, um, all those classrooms behind the building and the side of the building. So, so we got we got quite a, quite a campus here. So these are all the mobiles that we have right now. And they're looking at putting awnings in. It would take a lot of awning. I'm not sure how it would, it would be handled, but. You know, for, Blue, for, for Bell Fork Elementary, we said awnings were, were a, a two-way. It was a safety issue. Okay, so the first one, they're wanting little covers over the porches by the doors. And then the second one, they're wanting covered awnings, walkways. Right. To, from the main building to the mobile units. Is that the... Outside mobile will need awnings over the doors. So they're just, that one, they're just requesting just something over the, the doors. Over the door. yeah. that's, that's, that's possible. And we, have, we, we basically put an awning just like going out there over the, kind of right. over the door the best we can. So, <laughs> the two, three. I think we have the same thing we do with the creek, what we do with the creek. That was a, that was flooding. Uh, we did Belfort, we did two way on it. Yeah, I would say the same thing. Okay. Both of those. Paved staff. Parking lot in the back. It's been identified, but it's a long term identification. About $231,000 worth of work. The way that, what it's right to you, right? Yeah, what they're looking at is right in here. Same kind of request at Belfort, you mm -hmm. said. Yes. 5B. Mm -hmm. Extra, extra staff gravel parking lot in the front. I think what is that out by the soccer field too? I think that's yeah, back right below that and yeah, to your left. Right in here. And possibly something can be added back over there, but Okay. Do we have a do we have a lot of problem with the staff parking right now? Yes, sir. I know we probably got what, about 25 there, another 25, 30 there. And they park out front as well. And they're parking out front right in yes, there. Yes, sir. Right they're using all three spaces for parking. And your bus is unloaded and loaded in the back bay there, too. Mm -hmm. It's just the original design of the school, you know, which you see has grown with the temporaries and stuff. So right. their staff has grown and keeps growing. Mm -hmm. So it just limits the uh, spaces. All right, and then, all right, so let's talk about that then. The other side of it is we know in our plans, we've got another elementary school coming into the, in between Jacksonville and uh, Richlands. So when that happens, then we're going to be relieving some of the pressure on the schools in that process where we need the additional parking in. So if we bring them down. So no, what I want to be careful about is are we going to spend money for parking that's not going to be used in right. two years? Do you follow me? So the placement of or the placement of this new school would be would impact enrollment for heritage? It'll, it'll impact uh, enrollment for heritage, um Richlands Elementary for several schools in the area. Okay. And we'll do some load balancing at that point in time. So. I'll make that lease to see until we find out what's happening. Yeah, five C. Okay. Media center redesign. They, they want us to go in and redesign the media center. Okay. 
yesterday in that process. Um, what they have is they have the distribution desk in the middle of the, in the middle of the media center. They want to move it to the back wall, um, which means it's, all this casework that was done was part of the original building. The original building was built as a K-5, but um, I know I know the staff right now wants to have that media, that distribution us center moved to the back wall instead so they can use it for other spaces that's something that we've we've been considering but we haven't taken any action on it yet because um in, in the distribution center in the middle of the distribution center i mean it gives them visibility of all areas of the of the media center at that point in one location put it in the back wall then you do have some blind spots. And so that's one of the considerations we were looking at at the time. But this is a request that comes up every year for the last two or three years. I think the other school that designed, I think their circulation desk is offset in, on, on one side of it. Yeah. Sandwich, yeah, I can't remember for Sandwich. Yeah. Okay. So to do that, that would be instructional yeah, that, that's still I mean that's mm -hmm. I don't know I'll go with a C yeah C okay two additional copy machines I'm gonna sit Jeff I'll just put that over on IT yeah as a print yeah all that right now is depending on what's gonna happen with our yeah. with the renewed okay print contract so yeah, I would just and same with the printers. Yeah, that too, yeah. Same thing for the printers. Okay. <clears throat> All right, guys. So we went to Heritage already. It's been about an hour and 15 minutes. You guys want to take a five minute break? Keep you fresh? All right. So we're going to, our next, our next stop, our, our next adventure is Hunters Creek Elementary School. Okay, and the first thing we want to do is provide retaining walls, grading asphalt paving at the end of the school property near the 900 hallway. Okay, near 900 has terrible ruts and poor drainage. So if I'm looking at that. Okay. Talking about what are we talking about, Mark? I think the bottom of that picture, right in here. Um, less than 900, probably. Right. But yeah, that that whole area back in there, to like get the access road is the wooded side or on the end of the building. Around the end of the building, there, there's okay. it looks like there's not room there, but there's like a, I mean, there's a road back in there, there's a tractor shed, all that that's covered somehow by the tree line there. Mm -hmm. Uh, whenever that was worked on, on Wassa went through there a few years ago, and it, it's kind of made it kind of mucky. I think there's a, a main that goes down through there. Yeah. Kind of follows the power lines. Yeah. I think right in down here is where they did it. Yes, sir. So they're talking about like coming through this way? Well, I think just, to, I don't know what exactly she's talking about, but I know where it's really bad is right from as you get to the end of that to go around. Right. I mean, it's, I mean, there's big deep ruts and giant holes and washouts just from. It doesn't matter. Yeah. That's, you know, if it's just a matter of adding rock and stuff. That might be something that we can do. If we need to put parking. You know, it's it's going to be more than what the maintenance. <coughs> yeah, I don't yeah, think it's parking that she's looking for. I think it's just um, getting the ruts filled out. But we, but we could ask somebody who has uh, uh, better information. I mean, who who, would, who knows the principal over there at Hunters Creek Elementary School? <laughs> uh, no, I don't know. I might see her occasionally. Okay. <laughs> but um, yeah, let's see if we can fill it in. You want to just make that maintenance and see yeah, what we can do? Maintenance is more of a work order. Okay, replace the cafeteria hot water heater. Since that was uh, requested, we it, it failed completely, and uh, mm -hmm. we had to do something about it. So we've already replaced it with maintenance funds this year. Okay. So it's complete. 
right, Hunters Creek Middle School. Cameras. Okay, six additional cameras for blind spots. And right now, Hunters Creek Middle has how many cameras? 32. 32? Mm -hmm. Okay. We've I'd say it's a two-way. They, we have some good amount of okay. issue over there. We're okay. always needing them. This one right here is a bridge to the neighborhood. Okay, this request for safety to walk from Hunters Creek Elementary to Hunters Creek Middle. So what we're, what we're talking about. Um, at Hunters Creek Elementary, I just did a survey for DOT to put out um, lines and in the mm -hmm. school signs there at Hunters Creek Elementary. To right. the new neighborhood across the street. Mm -hmm. And I think what they're talking about, because there is a bridge on the main road, mm -hmm. on the right sidewalk. There. Right right there. Right right if you here. go that narrow section of woods between right the here. middle school and the, I think there's a walkway or a path. There's a little path right there. Is there a little path back there? Right there. Right there. Was that for service though? No, they've always had it there. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I don't, was that for for students to be going through? Was that no, for no, uh, service uh, for the to get between the vehicle between maybe. the schools? Well, I think well. like for evacuation, um, such tricks like that. But upon dismissal, mm -hmm. for body things haven't changed. The students always went out the front, down the sidewalk, right along that way. Um, but if they're talking about ditches, it's got to be one along the sideway because I know it referenced the ditches. Yeah, and I think at one time we referenced them right in here. Right, it is probably a little rickety by now. Um, not in the best shape, and, and you know sixth grade boys love a ditch. So they, all they need is a reason. <laughs> so that's to replace the existing bridge? That's what I'm thinking. I mean, I didn't write this one, but that's what I'm thinking. If they're bridge talking about... Um, yeah, to neighborhood and bridge over the ditches. All right. Well, it um, and it's already a metal, it's already aluminum system. I think. Un we unless they're it. referring yeah. now Just and again. Put it under maintenance then, if okay. It's okay I was going to say there is a situation where, especially that I can't remember what's called Ashley Meadow, mm -hmm. um, going out the front of the school, the kids tend to run through the ditch, and that that was something that we were working on prior to okay, uh, having I, I a walkway remember. across that yeah. ditch and it would um, direct the students toward one specific area as opposed to kids coming out from different ones just jumping that ditch because um, at pick up and drop off that's where the cars also lined up right so that may be the area they're referring to <clears throat> that would be something probably that we'd have to have some other government agency to identify uh, because I, I would be afraid just to put a, a bridge there. Yeah, I think we talked about it. Yeah, we had talked about it before. Yeah. Right. But I think we need to find out exactly what areas they're talking about, too. Because, I mean, if we're... We will. Yeah. I'll let Dusty, I'll let you take take bleed, and then if we need to get the OT, we'll get Mark, I mean, Mike in there. Which Dusty? <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. So you want me, uh, okay, I'll take care of it. That's a maintenance thing, and then we'll get uh, Mike involved in it, too, if we need to. We've got to get the OT involved. Okay, replace HVAC equipment, place gym air handler unit. That's um, it's, it's put in the in this every year. Uh, we had funds uh, a few years ago to replace that one and Southwest Middle, and we ended up having to use pretty much all of the funds we had for the one at Southwest Middle because it was in worse condition for the gym. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it does need to be replaced. It's very expensive. Okay. Um, Three. So that's A. Jacksonville Commons Elementary playground equipment. Um, I have them down. Um, on mine to replace. Okay. So this is a duplicate. Yeah, this all be duplicate. All right. The top, the next three would all be duplicate. Okay. So. Okay, gravel or paving on access road. <clears throat> We're already working on that. Put the new gravel out there? We're trying to clean out the swells as far as on the mm -hmm. back side too to help with the water. Okay. So we're currently working on that. I okay. think it's in a lot better condition than it was. Yeah. It's still 
we probably need to get a civil engineer involved to look at that whole property mm -hmm. from the high school to the middle school to right. there. It's, and it's possibly get the city involved. It's, it's low help. land in that area. I mean, we all know that. So, so we do have drainage issues periodically. So okay. Just make that maintenance <coughs> that we can do, or do we fund getting the civil engineer involved? Well, I think for this one is the. I mean, it looks like uh, we gravel the road, and then you, you're doing the swells right now. We'll take a look at it um, as needed after that. Commons Middle School. Mobile classrooms, at least three. Uh, that's a capacity issue. I think we've already identified it. We're trying to put together. So that's an, that's an instructional need, but it's an A. Because I think we're, we're getting ready. We've put in some mobiles already, haven't we? We're, we're trying to set up two right now. Mm -hmm. And we're working on trying to get them set, like I said, set up so we can use them. So in that process, that's in process. Because we identified it last year to go ahead and start working on this for this coming year. Jacksonville Commons Middle School outdoor locking storage unit for PE. Okay, they like to have some kind of outdoor PE storage, some kind of a shed or something. We've got it identified in um, capital improvement plan for the 2022-23 school year. Is there something we need earlier than that? We'd have to check with the city planning because of, remember they um, have reduced the number mm -hmm. of, of exterior buildings or even containers that we can have on site now. Right. Uh, so if we use up all our if we use up all our allowance on mobile classrooms, we may not have an allowance for another building. All right, we'll do it to, to be determined on that one. We have to take a look at it and see what it's going to take. And, Additional sidewalks and walkways for mobile classrooms, that's part of the mobile classroom process. So that's that's almost a duplicate there. Yes, so when we put the mobiles in, we are we factor in that we're gonna put walkways in there too. Keyless entry where mobile classrooms are going. Do they already have the keyless entry, the S2 system? No, but um, it's coming spring. We've already put a PO in. Okay. Take so care it'll take care of the whole school, not just the. Okay, so entry. that's that's already in process. Yes. Good. Overhang for car riders and mobile classroom area. This is also a new bridge spot, so they want to have some kind of a canopy area over there too. I know we said for the other schools that we, they were two ways. Is that something we're all in agreement on? I'm doing a lot of talking now, guys. So if you guys want to start chipping in. Okay. We need our bathrooms to have lights and kitchen to be able to cook when housing over 200 people. All right, that's that's when it's a shelter. That's when it's a shelter. And one of the things we're working on, we're, we're, we're in discussions with the county right now as well on what we can do as far as generators and um, and uh, some grant money possibly coming coming for that as well. So that's one of the conversations we're currently having. Um, so I'm gonna put this as another funding resource, which would be, what, six? <laughs> but it's something that we wanna look at pretty quickly. So it's a 6A that uh, we're working on. Okay, Jacksonville High School added security cameras. Currently have 34. They have 34, mm -hmm. and that's the one. That's the one campus is for a high school that's spread out more than any other campus. Yeah, I don't think they could ever have enough with as much traffic they got going through there, and we have a lot of issues with the buses over there. Two A. Yes, please. You guys, are, okay. Painting. This is one that was on the capital improvement plan for this year, <coughs> coming year. You guys still in agreement with that? On the schedule, Daniel, Dusty? Yeah, it's not on the schedule, but yes, sir. It's not on the schedule? 
We have a schedule, no sir. Okay. All right, so is it, should that be a 3A or a 3B or 3C? Would, are there other schools that need it more than that? Those are Jackson High School is in dire need. Okay. Those high schools. 3A. All right, 3A. We do the main gym floor. We're, we're in the process. process. That's in process. The eleventh most urgent roofing project is the three A right vocational. The seventeenth, three B. The twenty seventh. Is it three C? Yes. Sir. C for the 28th which is so we're saying that um, make sure we understand because we're just reading this off and I know I need to be more clear on what we're doing so the vocational the vocational building was the 11th most urgent roofing project need and so we said that we were going to do from the 12 most urgent roofing needs would be a, a to be looking at uh, complete next year um, then we went to uh, the media center, which was the 17th uh, most urgent roofing project, and so we said that needs to be done with the next two to three years. Building five and building three are the 27th and 28th most urgent uh, roofing needs, respectively, and so we're saying that needs to be done within the next five years. And all these roofs are over 20, between 20 and 30 years old. So they're all old. So all they need to be replaced, old. but realizing we have limited sources and funding and stuff, they're in better condition than the other, the, um, the vocational and the media center. One of the things we do with the roofing too, just, just so people are aware of it, is when Dusty and, Dusty and Daniel go out there and look at the roofs, they actually physically go up on the roofs and inspect them as well, or have a team go up there and inspect them as well and they also look at the age of the roofs. So a roofing system is a life cycle system that uh, we say after 20 years we need to start looking at replacing, 20, 30 years. In that process we're actually going up and looking at the roofs too to get a better evaluation of them. It may be a 20 year old roof, but it may, it may be in a condition of a 30 or 40 year old roof. That, so we need to, it's got to be replaced right away. Or it may be a 20 year roof that looks like it's got another five or six years of life in it, so we'll put that farther down the road. So it's not just the age of the roof, it's the physical characteristics of the roof too that we look at. Is that right? Yes, sir. That, we look at our work orders. Uh, we've uh, done some infrared scanning <coughs> on a lot of our roofs to see uh, if we could uh, do it intelligently and make right. good repairs. And so uh, we put up this, it's a lot, it's a big process. And, and for the community as a whole, the other thing they need to understand is when we talk about a roof, a lot of times if, if they see that uh, we replace a roof at uh, a school, a Jacksonville High School, well that's just one roof or one piece of a roof. Remember, at Jacksonville High School, we probably have 20 buildings out there. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, we're not replacing everything, we're just replacing one section of the facility. So that's a lot of times when people say, well you just replaced the roof at Jacksonville High School. Well yeah, we did. We replaced one section, but then we got other sections that have to be replaced going forward. And and, and the longer we wait, it's going to the price of replacement goes up exponentially because if we can just take and replace the rubber membrane that's on top of the existing insulation, then we save the insulation. Uh, so that the price of the project goes down. If the longer we wait and more water gets in there, um, there's more to replace. And then eventually if the deck, the steel deck or the tectum deck starts breaking down, then we have even more problems. Um, so uh, it could, you, know, it, you pay me now or pay me later. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we're seeing some evidence of that. So some of our jobs are gonna be costing more uh, than they would have if we could replace them at the normal uh, age of the roof when we should have been replacing them. Uh, mm -hmm. so, but the funds were not available. So we did the best we can with what we got. Uh -huh. 
that's that's another thing that people people tend to forget is the money that's received in maintenance or operations or for capital outlay and all these other funds and, and technology these are these are monies that are going into the school system and it's not going to our department it's going back out to the facilities and to support the schools and that's what a lot of people tend to forget well, we get all this money when well, all this money is going straight out to the schools we don't we don't have our own little pocket of money back there that we we draw from so anything we get we, we send right back out but our job is to make sure we distribute it appropriately okay carpet replacing the main office for Jacksonville High School I know they've asked that for a couple years now and I know Daniel you you're more involved in that part right there well, we we'll to look at our schedule as far as replacement. Okay. So, so we'll put a, we'll check it out first. We'll put maintenance. Okay. So for maintenance. Yes, okay. Sir. Okay. Replace main electrical switch gear. Um, that continues. We just continue to keep adding that, and the reason being is um, it works now, and. Um, <laughs> So we do have power at the school. It's just these components; these are not manufactured anymore. These are just big fuses, and uh, and the switch gear. If that was to blow out for some reason or other, uh, then especially this, a majority of the school, the older part of the school, would be for that would not have power. And we might could bring in generators on flatbeds and things and get power to the school while this is being replaced. It's just it would be convenient. Well. It would be better to use it when the school's not being used, if, if at all possible, during the summer. Um, mm -hmm. That's a, a major expense. It, it is, it works, it's working now. It may work for another 20 years. It's just those components are no longer available. So it's a... It's one of those things. It's a risk assessment, basically. Basically, I mean, yes, sir. It works well and stuff right now, but at the same time... We have a couple of schools like that, yes, sir. If it, if it fails, then... It's going to be may catastrophic be for, failure. We may be out for a day or two until we get some diesel trucks in, the diesel generators. When I say diesel trucks, I'm talking about diesel generators coming in on a truck. <laughs> yes, sir. On a flatbed truck and hooking them up and running them. So it's a three. I know it's in the capital improvement plan program for year two. <coughs> you could say three, three B. Okay. I mean, we, we have we have a plan. If it fails, it's just we may be out of school there for a day or two while we go through that process. So was we've got contacts. We got we got we got a contingency plan in place. But at the same time, if it does fail, then it's, yes, sir. We'll have to activate that. It may take a couple of days to get everything hooked up. Place old lighting in classrooms. That's buildings two, three, four, and five. Uh, yes, sir. And uh, because of the cost, it's put in as a capital. Mm -hmm. uh, we are continually upgrading uh, the lights at the schools whenever we can, and we're moving to LED. And in fact, we're starting to stock uh, the LED tubes in the warehouse now, as of a few weeks ago. So, as um, as normal maintenance, we're going through. But if we were to try, that funding would be, and, and you'll see, I think there's a ceiling and lighting um, line item further back. So we could put that as, say, a B now or a C and look at it again uh, in, a, in an hour or two. Okay. All right, replace old lighting. Oh, I'm sorry. LED lighting in the gym. Uh, we're working on it right now. Okay. As of maybe today or tomorrow, we've already started. Repair walkway awning. And that's that big, big um, concrete awning three. throughout the uh, Jacksonville High School. That's that's not an easy project. It's been on there ever since I've been here. That we've been since the '60s. Yeah, and it's something that needs to be replaced. I know we've been working slowly but surely to get all the all the utilities and the infrastructure all the time. There's cables and power that was in inside and stuff. I don't at the same time. Right now we've got the boring done for 
the IT stuff is off of it now? Well, some of the IT stuff is off of it. The, um, they're currently pulling intercom. They, they had a complete intercom replacement out there. Mm -hmm. And they're currently pulling K-Wing for both the intercom okay. and for some of those cameras. Door access stuff, too. All right. And door so, access. Yeah. Right. so they're pulling that under, under, they're boring that, though, right? They're not putting it in the walkway. Right. Okay. And, and but now that, $100,000, you know, that will not no. pay. I think we've had estimates, $800,000 um, in mm -hmm. the past. Because it's going to take yeah, some I heavy think, equipment. I think the last um, estimate we had was for six to ten years out at $250,000, give or take. So, and, and so it will cost that much just probably to tear it down. <coughs> so, and I mean, it does need to be replaced. I mean, I think everybody's seen it before. I mean, it's a, it's an issue. So it's a three. Is it A, B, or C? I think I would personally. I think I would consider the two. Because their their concerns issue. are that it's it's a safety issue because it's cracking and breaking in certain areas. Uh, on it, as far as awning, it still serves its purpose, and we've been able to try to get most of the drains unclogged. It's been a long process. I think it's more of a safety issue. So now. it's a two A two B. I think I would put it as a two A. Okay. And see how far it can stretch. All right. Need drainage line for stadium, field, and track. And that's something that's we've always had an issue with the drainage over there. Yes, sir. Three. But it is a three A. And then see how it goes. I, I kind of agree. I mean, we, we've been. Yeah, it's been a long time. We've been addressing this for a long time. We need to get this thing going. All right, Meadowview Elementary School. Installation of a safety corridor wall. When visitors are buzzed into the school, they immediately have access to the whole school before entering the main office. We'd like a corridor with glass wall built as an additional safety. This is so when public comes in, they don't have access yeah, so to the have, whole building. Yeah, they'd yeah. like to have a, a security vestibule, yeah. basically is what they're looking at. Yeah. Same thing with the state side, we have the same. It's just about every school. Every school. Every school in the county, except for. Real. Yeah. Right. I mean, I think it's a need. Okay. But if it's a need, um, now is it an A, B, or C? or? I, I mean, realistically, I would say a B. Okay. And would 25000 cover it, Dusty? Put a. We have not quoted them. That's just an estimate. We can go ahead and contact the contractor and see right. if we can get some pricing on it. We'll take a look at let it, what we got right there then. That pricing may have come from the architect. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, installation of additional card readers on doors. Um, I'd say 2B. They just got the door system, and they um, want to adapt, add some things for convenience factor. We're, okay. So Since right now they've got the... And one of the things, I mean, so the community is aware too, we're, we're, we're moving towards um, perimeter access um, door locks where uh, staff have to use their badge to actually have access to the facilities and it has to be the correct person. In other words, you can't have a, a teacher from one school going over to another school using the badge to get into a school. They have to be assigned to that school. And depending on the role, they'll have certain access to certain things at certain times of the day. So that's what we're looking at right now. And we're moving towards that with uh, several schools. And each year we try to do more and more. Um, that being said, I think Metaview has already got theirs installed. Mm -hmm. And so they have, and, and we won't go into the detail right now, but, uh, and so you're saying they, they'd like to have more access? Mm -hmm. Okay. And you think it's a... A 2B. I think we've got, like I said, I think they, they just want to add some additional, um, like, back doors to places um, for right. convenience factor. Um, okay. 
And like I said, we won't, we won't, um, that's something that we won't really. But their whole campus is locked down. Yeah. Okay. Next one's a work order. Next one's a work order. Okay, that's the installation of fence gates. Is that what you think by that, Dusty? Yeah, I know we've been talking about that one for a while, too. So, well, that's a fairly inexpensive thing that we can do. Yeah. Yeah. But so, the one right below it also refers to this one over here. So. Right. Installation of bridges. So what they're talking about is um, in that process they're talking about for the, for the playgrounds. They're gated, all, they're gated already. I mean, they're fenced in already. They want to have gates so they can have, have access and exit the, exit the facility of the area. Uh, in case there's some kind of a fire or anything like that. They don't feel like they're trapped into a playground. And right now they're kind of, they're kind of backed up with ditch for the fences there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a maintenance issue? We can order, we can put in the, uh, the gates, that's not a problem. Okay. The bridges, what we've been doing is actually using ramping, you know, aluminum ramping for mm -hmm. a trailer. Right. And um, so, you know, we would need funding to buy those ramps. Okay, so that'd be a two-way. Okay, removal of railroad move, removal of railroad ties around the playground. Okay, it looks like the railroad ties are are uh, in bad shape. Okay, so is that capital or ongoing maintenance? I mean, it's it's. It's a capital okay. because of the cost of it. Um, so two way. I mean, I've, yeah. I've, I've done the measurements of the perimeter and figured out how much it would cost to put in those big plastic um, barriers that we use. Okay. All right. Playgrounds need leveled. That's maintenance. It's just leveling the playground. And they were just working on those, so they may, that may already be complete. Okay. Curb ramp installed. We need a curb ramp installed in front of the school where staff parks to allow access from parking lot to the sidewalk. It is not handicapped <coughs> accessible at this time. Can we see a yeah. Google Earth on that? So right now, what they're probably talking about is right in here. Is that, I don't know if it's a... See, I think that one is. I think, I think you're talking about the other one, sir, yeah, to your right. Say, to your right. 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 That, whereas that little bridge down that way, in the middle. Oh, sir. In the middle of the school, right there. Right here? Yes, sir. Either talking about there or at the very end of the sidewalk, because there's one at the front. Yeah, I thought there was one at the there front. There is one at the front. There, yes, there's sir. Handicap. There's, it's there's right there, because this handicap uh, yeah. space is right there beside where it's yeah, more. Yeah, we got it right here as well. So yeah. they want the, they want another one across in the middle, where that little bridge is at there. Because I think that's where the staff goes in before yes, they unlock the school. Yes, sir. I yes. think that that was asked for years ago. That walkway that was there, and I think maintenance installed that walkway down there uh, on the right. So they could, wouldn't have to walk around and use the main entrance in the middle of the parking lot. Um, so, is that what you think you do? Yeah, those are all in the, in the middle. Okay. But we, I, I guess, if, I guess we could do that. Would probably is that something we can do with our asphalt money? They want to cut out the curb and cut out so we can put it around. Have the handicap accessible there. Mm -hmm. Are we going to put handicap parking down there too? We probably going to have to because that's what it's for. All right, so but we do have spaces. but we do have handicap access to the sidewalk. Already. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Do you want us to look at that and evaluate it? Yeah, I mean, we can look at it, but uh, if it's something that's it may be something that we can do ourselves. Right. But I mean, as far as we do have the handicap accessibility already there. In the playground area, they talk about uh, handicap access. Yeah, just adding in a ramp. Okay. So that's that's, that's a mandated because we don't have handicap access there. 
one A. Okay. So that's. <coughs> is this something where we'd have a contract to do? Is something maintenance related at all? We could just order it. I think we can just do it. Yeah. All right. yeah. We can put we them can, at all the playgrounds now. Oh, yeah. Just a matter of ordering one, I think we could do it. Yeah, I think like at Richlands Elementary School, you know, they've got the plastic um, ramps going in there. So we can work something out there pretty easily. Yeah. Okay. Morton Elementary Morton Elementary School. Additional visitor parking in front of the school. Alright. And so we're we'll looking at Morton. She was in front of the all the tour uh, the multi purpose room there. We're parking and stuff right now in the grass there. But right now, got, she's talking about right in here. No, wow. sir. Right in front of there, she's been letting them park there. Well, I was thinking, but I was thinking both spaces of the hill where you were just at, and right in front of the building, all the way down to the curb. Right, we're yeah, because right they block off the the bus lot, and so you've got like the parents drop parking to drop off. Mm -hmm. And it's just a, a lot of traffic in there. They requested rock where you had your pointer from there, no, sir, by the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. They requested for us to rock at the end of the sidewalk back to the front mm -hmm. because you can tell where the cars and stuff have been parking. And right. They requested that. Basically, okay, so take it all the way down. Yes, sir. Here's what they're saying. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Is it, I mean, unfortunately, there is limited parking right here for visitors. If we're going to do that, we're probably going to end up getting paid, you know, because of we're providing public park there, and we've had issues with um, people tripping we have to and sliding, and it becomes a more of a safety issue. Okay. So, what would, be, uh, what would that be considered? Is that a safety, safety. issue? Okay. <clears throat> this year or next year? Or? It's a problem now. So. Okay. So I'm going to. I'm going to bump up the price on that too because you need to double, double it at least. Yeah. Okay. Crosswalks in front of the school. That's to go with park, the, the parking and stuff. Because right now, anyone who parks there, they're just walking anywhere. Wherever they get out of the car, they're walking at any angle to the school. And they're, and Coming so, in this way. Yeah, so it, it could be anywhere. So. I think the thought was that if there was designated crosswalks, they would actually cross in, in certain areas. That's more of a striping issue. We can take care of that if we get the if funding we know where for it's that. Go. Yeah. Okay. Because what we could do is put two crosswalks as far as in there if we need to for the okay. parking. So that's more of a maintenance. This is what we put it in. Create an additional playground. Okay, because the student enrollment, they're, they're, they're looking at another uh, playground. So we got one playground right here, then we got the ball field right here. So I think they're one. And there's a playground. There's two on playgrounds the on the other there. side. One's pre K. There's, there's a pre K playground, but then there's that um, right beside that, that. Go to your to the left on the screen. That's a playground. Auto, see the building with the black roof, the bigger building with the black roof. Next to 121. Right here. Yeah. Right yeah here. Come on down. Come on down. That's yeah. a playground there. That's yeah. playground. playground. Preschool's at 125. And they got the ball field right and there. Ball field. And then there's an EC playground on 199. Yeah, yeah, right in here. That's all EC playground. Yeah. So what we'd, we'd have to do is we'd have to go ahead and convert the ball field basically into a playground. And that's highly used by Parks and Rec. Mm -hmm. So 
so it's a four. Four B or four C? B or C. Okay. Hmm. All right. Not to okay. take out the field. Morton Elementary School D building is the seventh most urgent need. So that's a three A. Paved gravel road for buses. Okay. That's something we do on a routine basis. And we're talking about from here coming down through this way until it gets into paving. Is that just a, is that a, is that a big issue right now? It's no, not a big issue. Um, these rock right now. These rock. We, we yeah. usually two to three times a year, we had a bit of rock back out there. Yeah. Okay. So. So it's, it would be nice to have. Yeah. Let's do a 3B or 3C. Okay, Newbridge Middle. Okay, we've got uh, 25th Most Urgent Roofing Project, so that's a 3C. Boiler Room, 26th, 3C. HVAC Equipment. And the way we had it in the Capital Improvement Plan was that we were going to do parts of it for the next five years. Because it was 150,000. Is that something that you're still looking at, or do you need to do more at one in any one particular time for the HVAC uh, for the cafeteria and uh, classrooms above cat? It would. We could split it up. Maybe do half and half. Okay. So it's a three A. I'm going to put in there. Okay. Window replacement? That was more on a long term capital improvement, but is that something that's needed now or let's say three B. Three B? Okay. Carpet replacement. Carpet needs replacing the following classrooms. I, I think that's something that we just put underneath maintenance. Okay. Again, we, we keep track of that and we can pull that out of our, out of our carpet budget. It's a work order. Mm -hmm. And then painting, they want to continue repainting throughout the school. That began in August 2018. It's in process. We, we stopped, but yes, sir, we need to get back over here. Okay. So it's already been scheduled for this this year. This coming summer. Then drainage, parking lot and sidewalks are not draining properly and water accumulates. Uh, I think we've taken care of the majority of that already. Is okay. That's complete. All right, guys. Now the one thing I got to do that's real important, I got to save. <laughs> yes, please. All right. So it's about 11, 11.05. Two hours and five minutes. Is that enough for one day? What we're going to do is the next time we get together, okay, go ahead and take your sheets with you and uh, just review them and stuff. If there's anything that you see questions of, they'll, go, they'll start going quicker as we go through this process now. So the next meeting we'll have, we'll finish it up and then we'll get the, we'll get the number. And just, just so you know right now, I can Let's let's play around just a little bit so you can see what I'm, what I'm doing right here. Uh, let's see. We got a filter. So, oops. Hang on, I want to filter. Well, anyway. What I'll do is I'll filter this when we come back and, I'll, and we'll be able to see based on the different categories and classifications how much money we're talking about at any given point, okay? 
next meeting, when, when will be a good time to meet, guys?